I want to begin today's lesson asking you to picture movies that you've seen where people have gone to offices and stuff is all over the office, all over the tables, all over the shelves, all over the, the floor in some cases. We can all think about movies that we've seen. I remember there was one movie and it, um, it, it portrayed somebody who lived in New York City and he had aisles through his apartment with books and papers on either side and everything was stacked up. And movies uh, that involved... Uh, gum shoes that involved uh, private investigators who had things all over their office and someone would ask for something and they would say, oh, I know it's here somewhere. There's an ongoing argument about whether somebody that keeps a messy desk is especially gifted or especially not gifted. And whether somebody who keeps a neat desk is obsessive compulsive or just organized. But having conjured up in your mind those images of desks that are organized and desks that aren't, and people who know where to find things and people who can't find a thing once they put it down somewhere, or go from one place to another, leaving things around. You've got that image in your head. Now I want you to imagine that a computer in the old days began with two kinds of memory, ROM and RAM. ROM memory was like the giant filing cabinet. It was the hard disk that where everything was stored. Everything. And in the and even today, when you want to save something on your desktop, we think it's going somewhere because we give it an address. But inside the inside the 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 innards innards of the computer those actual files can be stored anywhere. Because remember, computers have a special language, which is nothing more than dots off and on. And things get stored wherever there is space inside the computer. But the computer knows how to find every single file on our desks. Our desktops, I meant. Whereas we might not know where to find everything that's on our desktops. It's all about organizing storage, whether it's on your desktop or on your real desk in your office. Because if you can't find something on the on the computer that you've done, you might as well not have it at all. And I just made up a, uh, made a video in which I talk about having inadvertently deleted files. And the software I found to help me find those files wanted me to back everything that I found up on, a, on an external hard drive. I don't have it handy or I would show it. Oh, yes, I do. On an external hard drive that is like the hard drive of a, of a, of a computer. Computers only have so much memory. And everything has an address. When you're working with your students or you're working with your kids, it might be against the grain 
but they need to learn how to properly title something and properly save it and save it at least twice so that they have two copies of anything. When I had this problem with the computer, my problem was that I didn't take out the external thumb drives that I used. If I had taken those external thumb drives out, everything that I wanted, I would have not had destroyed. But when I emptied my preview file, it went to the thumb drive and took out the stuff that I had previewed. That's what it does. That's what the computer does. The computer is nothing more than a dumb instrument. The brains are in the RAM, the random access memory, where everything is processed. And if you run out of RAM, the old computers used to go to the spare, the spare space inside the ROM where it kept things. And so that made for slow processing. Now that we have such huge, huge hard drives, that becomes less of a problem. I remember when we first started, when I had a Commodore 64, you know what the 64 meant. The 64 meant it had 6,400 kilobytes of storage space. And think about it. 6,400 kilobytes of storage space. Nothing was very big. No program was very big. And we used to have, first we had floppy disks, then we had external disks, and things would be saved on that. But then we jumped. We went from 6,400. We went by leaps and bounds from 256 to 540 to over 1,000. And now my new laptop has, has a half a million, a half a million gigabytes of storage space. That's lots of computer space. We don't think of it that way, but that's what it is. But so when you're working with your student and they're writing a story, you need to remember to tell them, give the story a unique name and save it in the proper location. I create all kinds of files on my desktop and things go inside those files based upon what I have in the file. It's like having a filing cabinet. In the old filing cabinets, we had five fold file folders and they had names and labels on them. And you would open up the filing cabinet and you would put something in the proper file. So when you needed to retrieve it, you knew where to get it. You can't just put it in a drawer somewhere and then pile other things on top because that way it becomes very easy to lose. Another thing to remember when you're talking about storage is the naming of something. If you give two files the same name, one file overwrites the other. It will replace. And so even if you've got umpteen copies of a story, you need to call each copy by something else unless you know you want the new version to overwrite the old version. It's very hard for somebody who is not used to organizing themselves for keeping things in the right place. It's very hard because you have to use a logic to save and you have to use a logic to retrieve it. In case you don't know about these, these are external thumb drives. And you probably will know by the way they're ended, that they're USB ports. 
their U that they go into a USB port on the computer. So everything should be backed up. I use the cloud. Cloud computing is very good because you can go anywhere and log into your cloud and find the files that you're working on and, con and continue. So it's all about the addresses. Where is something saved? How is it saved? And what is its name? And using some form of organization, because I, I've seen on TV families where they have one computer and they have three or four students, three or four children who have to use the same computer. If you're not careful, they'll get everybody's files mixed up. And then when you sit down with them and they want to work on something, you lose half your time looking for what it is that you need. So if you're one of these families where you have two or three children all using the same laptop, then you need to make sure each child has their own file on the desktop named with the name of each of the children so that whatever they make goes into that file. And then when they need it, they go to their name on the desktop and look for the file and retrieve it. Most computer programs will require them to save their work, whether it's problem solving or research or references or creative writing or whatever. They'll need to save it because they're, they're going to need to go and come back. If they save it in the wrong place, they'll never find it again. And I'm going to end with this image. When I was a classroom teacher, before we had computers, and we had to get, we had to, that was part of the program, to get children to practice creative writing. You would start and you would teach and you'd read a story and you'd maybe give them a challenge and then they'd all start to write. And when the bell went, because you had to finish with the bell, everybody would put their stuff in their desks. But they would put papers in their desk. And if they were, if they didn't like what they began to write, they'd put that in the desk and then something else in the desk and then they'd have to clean it all out and throw everything out. So I remember students who could never find what they wrote the day before because everything had been cleaned up and they'd thrown out. The computer at least will keep track of it if you keep track in your head of how you're saving it. It's all about saving properly and making sure you store things in the right places. Otherwise, you're lost before you've even begun. Remember, hard drive storage and thumb drive storage, especially for creative writing or reports or reviews or whatever. Because if the hard drive crashes, you still have it on the thumb drive. If the thumb drive dies, and they do die, then you have it on the hard drive. If you don't save it in two places, you are stuck. Don't get stuck.